Hi, everybody. My name is Martha. I'm a relationship counselor and clinical sexologist. This is part three of four video that I'm doing with Katrine with love. And um, in the second video, I talked about how I support clients with vaginismus. And I'm sure people with vaginismus really want to get down to the details of how exactly uh, we help and some maybe uh, tips or techniques um, that uh, might be useful to you. So without further ado, uh, Katrin, how, how do you support clients with uh, vaginismus? Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, thank you. How does it all work? Well, I don't even really like calling it a treatment plan because in my opinion, it's just a healing journey and it's a mind, body and soul sort of connection that happens when we can come out in the world with this part of us that has always been there. This, I like to call it the sex goddess in us who has always been there, but in, for some reason or some way she has been as suppressed and of course due to fear scared to come out and play and our life experiences have short, sort of shaped that in in a unique way for every person and so yes the healing journey is unique yet there are some main pillars um, that are important to note so very importantly emotional healing we do not want to start with dilating with any part of the physical penetrative process until a lot of groundwork has been, has been done. And I like to call this like cleaning the slate because we carry in ourselves and our nervous system and our emotional and mental bodies, a lot of emotional pollution from our past life experiences. And so it becomes important to first dive deep and understand why the cycle of pain got created for us, why we started to have this anticipation of pain, this bracing and therefore an avoidance of intimate play, sex penetration in particular, so that we can kind of start to work our way backwards and to clean the very same things that created this body response of vaginismus in the first place. We're retraining our body to approach intimacy and sex from a place of excitement and First neutrality rather than pain, and then later excitement rather than neutrality. So cleaning the slate in itself involves um, some deep, deep emotional work. And sometimes, in fact, quite often, we don't necessarily pinpoint the main uh, reasons that you know the person says, absolutely, this is why I'm experiencing vaginismus. But we look at themes in life that were present for them that very likely created the body response. Still, I like to say though, if we don't know why it happened, it can still be healed. And that brings people a lot of peace because I know that was the case for me. I, I tried to understand why, 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 why me? Why is this happening to me? What happened in my life? Where did I go? where did I break, right? <laughs> in which moment did this all happen? And it's not absolutely necessary to know 100% in order to heal. Uh, with people, we, we kind of explore the themes of fear of the masculine, for example, is one big one. Repression of the feminine, there may have been reasons in life um, in which we've kind of observed a, a female mentor, like a, a mom or an older sister or an aunt, that didn't quite take care of herself, didn't treat herself as a person who deserves love or self-care. And so there have been these cycles that were created of always wanting to push through life, to go, 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 to be a really amazing high performer, but in our intimate life, in our personal space, to not feel like we deserve to relax, that it's okay to rest, that it's okay to treat ourselves to the pleasures of life. Um, other things we explore could be any physical injuries, um, the way that sex was sort of introduced into our lives very often with <laughs> incredibly limited sex education. And all of these pieces are part of the emotional healing journey. Um, specifically though, we kind of dive deep into working with the subconscious mind because the subconscious is responsible for 95% of our behavior in life, whereas the conscious mind is only 5%. 
Um, and so we can tell ourselves over and over again, you know, I like sex or I am confident, but if our subconscious doesn't believe it, we're trying to sail the ship in one direction, but we've got our anchor down and it's creating resistance. And very often that's how the confusion gets explained in our own selves of, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing my best, I'm really trying, but it's not happening. And often we need to lift that anchor on a subconscious level to create a belief system, a, a way of programming internally on a deep level that is in line with overcoming vaginismus in the first place. So that's one particular tool in the emotional healing journey that I've found to be incredible in my life. And I, I bring to people in our healing journey together over four months working with the subconscious. Another piece in the emotional healing journey, uh, I use a practice from Tibet and Tibetan monks use this to clean that slate of the past, to be able to clear out the canvas so that we can start painting anew on a blank canvas when we actually start to kind of go into the celebration of sex um, in the first place and to create these new patterns in life that are going to be conducive to overcoming vaginismus. So those are two main tools in the emotional healing journey. Um, and at the same time, learning to gain awareness and control of the pelvic floor muscles is another huge, huge pillar before we ever try to poke ourselves with a dilator and insert anything inside. So when I start with people in the four month journey, we begin the emotional healing together. And at the same time, they get guidance on gaining awareness and control of the pelvic floor muscles, relaxing the pelvic floor, but knowing that it's a full body system. We hold a lot of tension in other parts of our body. And when we start to become aware of that, it even intensifies for a little bit because we now are consciously aware of like, oh wow, I've been carrying so much tension in my jaw or my shoulders, the legs, the lower back, and all of that it impacts the pelvic floor muscles. And so at the same time of, of emotional healing, we're doing pelvic floor relaxation, and we're kind of moving like this in the four months where we're making a lot of progress, we're cleaning the slate, and only then can we start into the journey of understanding who we are authentically as sexual beings, who we are authentically because we have seen so many examples of who we should be, how it should look, and often in the media, uh, only a few different erotic languages are shown, typically the sexual erotic language, which is kind of like the direct, like, let's go for it, <laughs> um, penetration right away. But there are different erotic languages, and the sexologist named Jaya, she created the system of what she calls the erotic blueprints. Yeah. Um, and I think it's really important to kind of dive into that body of work and to find what works for us, for our nervous system. What is the key to finding safety that then allows for curiosity, that then allows for pleasure in our own nervous system? And everybody has a unique key. As Jaya calls it, it it's the, the blueprints that allow us to, um, to access this sense of safety in our nervous system. In the context of vaginismus, it's all about safety. She kind of explains it in the, in the context of pleasure. But in the process of finding our authentic sexual selves, we really do access safety, which allows for the physical relaxation also. And you start to have more fun with sex that doesn't yet involve penetrative sex at first. Um, but it becomes this adventure and this sense of coming home to yourself because you're finally embracing who you really are as a sexual being before we expect you to be able to have penetrative sex. So that's kind of the next little category and there's games that I, I've created that I have people play uh, with themselves or with a partner if that's the case for them. And uh, of course the emotional healing is continuing this entire time. Body image celebration, uh, just like you mentioned, looking at the vulva, exploring physically um, when it feels like it's a safe thing to do. And only at the end, <laughs> we're looking at actually introducing dilators. This is kind of the check marks at the end to say like, okay, all of this emotional work 
that we've done so far is coming into fruition. I know how to consciously now control my pelvic floor muscles so that I can relax them at my will. And therefore now we can jump into a dilating practice. And I've created video guidance on the step-by-step -step of what that looks like, when to know you're ready to move up a size, uh, all the preparatory steps, because the preparation to dilating is about one third of the entire process before we ever insert anything um, as well. And the only other thing I didn't mention um, is tension and trauma releasing exercises that I guide people through. And this is a beautiful body of work that um, looks at the, the nervous system and the physical body and how they interact to be able to actually release tension and trauma that has been stored in our physical body, our musculature and our fascia that may have been there for, for decades. And it is literally stored in the muscles. So through tension and trauma releasing exercises, what we do is we allow the body to activate the neurogenic muscle tremoring response, which is a slight shaking response that allows the stress to, um, to be expelled from the body. And it's incredible because we're allowing the body to release the tension from the inside out as opposed to from the outside in through a manual manipulation technique like massage and stretching. And of course, massage and stretching are a piece of it. I have guidance on that as well in my pelvic floor relaxation exercises, but the tension and trauma releasing exercises really take that to the next level and down regulate our nervous system. So we no longer feel like we're on this high alert uh, easily startled, like is the case for, for many of us in the, in the process of overcoming vaginismus. So that is kind of, that's kind of what it looks like. Um, any, do you have any questions about anything I mentioned that uh, wasn't so clear? Yes. Uh, so you said uh, the whole program is a four-month process? Yeah, that's how I've set it up typically with people that I work with one-on-one -on -one and in groups. And sometimes uh, people need less than that. And sometimes people are maybe on the second last dilator um, at the end of the four months, and then they need to work up to their goal size dilator. Often, most of us don't need to work with the last dilator, but in some cases uh, that is relevant. So yeah, four months is typically what I like to go with. Great, thank you so much for sharing. You're very welcome.